And the reason why I decided to, to, you know, change the Facebook group to more of a community minded group is, yeah, I want to have these conversations and share the podcast in there. And I want people from the pot that are listening to the podcast right now to go to the Facebook group and like, you know, hang out in there. And the reason why is because I truly believe that the community that is in there is so knowledgeable and so smart and so real. That was me on the show this time. Hey everybody and welcome to Seeker and Sage. My name is Danny Pomploon and today I had a co-host, Stephen Andrew. What's up, man? Hanging out. How was the show today? It was really nice to just hang out with you. What do we chat? What do we get into in this episode? It was just nice to hear where you are because there are some things that are shifting with you as a as a as a human and as a as a yoga professional so it was really fun to to hear what's developing yeah yeah some shifts and some changes some shifts and some changes there's some really great things also happening for the community as well in yeah. this episode so we're starting book club i know people were asking about it so hear a little more about it towards the end of the show um, and we're encourage every everybody that's listening to the show to head to the Seeker and Sage community group. And the show that the link will be in the show notes anyway. Um, and then the last part to it, just before we dive it into the actual episode itself, is this Saturday, uh, January thirtieth at nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can head into uh, the community group and grab a one hour free anatomy webinar uh, led by me and Derek Cook. Y'all have had him on the show before, he's amazing. Um, I'll actually leave the uh, sign up for that in the show notes as well. And the cool thing is, is it counts as accredited hours for you yoga teachers out there. It is 100% free. We just want you to come hang out and get nerdy with us. And uh, yeah, I think that's the gives for the show. Oh yeah, and of course, it wouldn't be a show and in, uh, intro unless I asked you to leave a podcast review. So if you like the show, please head over to iTunes. <laughs> just leave me a podcast already, please. Just say nice things. Now, if you can't support the show financially, it's all good. You can do that as well. But you can just tell people about the show or head over to iTunes and just give us a little love. Um, I, I think people just don't, forget that it really does go a long way for the show and it allows the show to continue to exist so share it with your friends or give us some love on uh, itunes or make a donation to the show because that really helps (laughs) and i think that's it without further ado should we get into the show let's do it let's do it steven andrew how are you i'm doing great danny how are you this is weird because i don't know i'm gonna do podcast interviews um with people and well (laughs) I mean, I, I do them with people. I just normally don't do them in person with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Virtual with people. It's normally virtual. Most of my podcasts, I don't know if everyone knows this, but most of my podcasts are actually done via the worldwide webs. Mm, the internet. The, have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. It's this new thing. Everyone's doing it. Great. Yeah. Most of my podcasts are done via the internet. So. Well, cool. This is weird. <laughs> It's fun to talk and see a face right in front of you. It is fun to talk and see a face right in front of me. And a face that I love to look at. Mm, thank you. You're so welcome. Ditto. Yeah. Thank you. Did Ditto. we just have a moment on air? This moment. Great. Well, <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, uh, Stephen, you have, if, if you've taken my class before you've or, or gone to one of my classes that has been subbed, either in person or on the internet, uh, the new thing that we were talking about, um, then you've probably met Steven. And if you've gotten my newsletter, then you've probably seen Steven in my newsletter. Or if you've gone on Instagram, you've seen Steven hanging around. So welcome, Steven, to the show. Thank you. Excited yeah. to be here. Yeah. What are we doing today? Well, you know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about just, the sh- well, you were there. So we had this big, you know, like this big meeting of the minds and, you know, thinking about how, how I wanted to move forward with the podcast, I think was really important. And Sherry and I talked about this on the previous episode or not this last episode, but the what 149, the episode before this, this last one. Um, and I'm really starting to step into for, for me, what I'm calling the expert. Right. Mm-hmm. And I read this book and it basically, it was just like, 
the, the, the cliffsness of it was, was really stepping into what you know. And, and then I ended up, do, I think maybe Sherry and I talked about this on the episode, but not, but you know, most people that, that get an undergrad degree, do you know how many hours that is? Did you tell me this? No. Okay. Do you know how many hours an undergrad is? No. Take a guess. Undergraduate hours. Yeah. Like an actual, like you're like in class undergrad hours. This is insane to me. Oh my gosh. I would say hundreds. Nope. Not even hundreds. It's 120. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've kind of done the math of like how many trainings I've done. I've done five, 500 hour trainings. Yeah. I've done four 200 hour trainings and now I've facilitated and I honestly lost count. I, I really don't. It's more than 20 for it's sure. Lots of hours. Yeah. It's a lot. And as I've been walking, uh, just w- walking in life, you know, I, I, I have considered myself a yoga teacher and I don't want to be a yoga teacher anymore. I want to be a yoga educator and really hone in on like my skill set of, you know, I've done the studying and I've done the work and I still have a lot more to learn and obviously a lot more to alchemize and synthesize. But what I know now is enough and the way that I can, it's really, it's a reframe, right? So it's really like coming onto the show and being like, all right, I'm going to share my perspective on things. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes, not all the time. I still want to have really awesome guests on here. Like, you know, Tara Styles is coming up and that was like super cool. And Richie, who was on the last episode was like mind blowingly cool but I also want to give myself an opportunity to share, you know, like some of the things that you wouldn't normally get from me unless you did a training with me or you went on a retreat or you've done a little more coaching with me or while well, mentoring is, you know, what I do. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the shift for you, the biggest shift in terms of seeing yourself as an educator versus a teacher? The way that I facilitate Mm-hmm. the way that I facilitate and what I'm willing to facilitate. I think for a long time, well, I mean, I witnessed it this last weekend, but you know, for a long time I taught what I was taught to teach, mm-hmm. you know, I, I did, you know, this teacher training. And so I did it uh, like, I've said this God knows how many times on this show, but you know, Jason, like, Hey Jason, like, you know, one of my main teachers, I spent a lot of time with Jason Crandall. And after I was done spending a lot of time with Jason Crandall, everyone was like, you know, you sound a lot like Jason. And I would just get livid, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and I was in my own ego about it, like being like, but I'm Danny Palm Plume, you know, like I'm not Jason. And, and then I did Janet for a long time and, you know, Hey Janet, love you too. Like, you know, two people who I just love, I have a thing for the (laughs) J's. Recently I did, I did Kia Miller. So maybe I'm just going down the alphabet right. now. Yeah. But, and then I took a lot from Janet, you know, like I, I like to say like Jason taught me how to be in my body and like how to understand how my body works. Jason taught me how to feel safe in my body and Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Jason taught me how to feel safe in my body, like how to like actually move it and be with it. And Janet taught me how to feel safe in my heart, mm-hmm. you know? And now I'm like a crossbreed of everything, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and even with Noah, you know, like he taught me how to really critically think like Noah taught me how to teach outside of the box, like really take everything that I learned, say, okay, that I understood it and then completely toss it out of the window and mm-hmm. then, you know, kind of alchemize it. And so now I'm synthesizing it and making it my perspective on it. And that's what I'm saying is like my expertise, right? I'm pulling from the threads of the masters that I would consider, you know, Mm -hmm. they, they are master teachers. They're, they've been teaching for 20 years plus that's, that's, you know, that's what I think. And, and giving my perspective from that, you know, giving my perspective from what I've learned from them and referencing my teachers and like, well, this is what I got from my teacher and this is how I understood it. And when we had that dialogue and that connection, this is what I've got versus, here's the playbook that I got from yoga Alliance. So I'm going to teach a 200 hour this way. And that's just, you know, I'm just going to check all the boxes and like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I just a little more, there's a little more me in there. So what can we expect in terms of, uh, uh, the experience? Like what are, what are some additional offerings now that you're, yeah. Well, you know, as I, as I said, so if anyone didn't listen to episode 149, which is, you know, the, the first episode of the year where me and Sherry, who's uh, one of my coaches, one of my coaches, and we kind of just talked about like 
where I'm at in life. You know, I had this big experience of my own over the holidays where I'm like really tying in all aspects of my life, you know, and they all influence the way that I show up, whether it's, you know, here in my home life or in teaching life. And, you know, they're all starting to become one. And, and because of that, my story is actually going to be a bigger part of yoga. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in my bio, but you don't go to my class and hear me share anything. And I want to pull from that wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the example that I have that was clear as day and, you know, as just before we hit record, we were like, well, what are we going to talk about? And I was like, well, I can, you know, this is, this would be the, the best thing to, to really get into. But, you know, I led the nourish and unwind weekend. And so it was two days of a yoga nidra restorative, um, myofascial release, um, and meditation. And I saw the need for it because I, was going to, I burnt out again, you know, this, you needed is, it. Yeah, this is, yeah, you teach to what you need. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we all like you guys, this is not a new story for anybody. Like you've seen my post. Sometimes I'm like, yeah. And then it, you can, tell, you can tell you're like, oh, Danny's crashing hard right now. <laughs> and, um, so I, I wanted to offer it because like the one, the practices really did get me through depression and through some really tough shit over this, you know, this last few months and I don't know. I just saw the need for it. I just, it was weird. It was one of those things where I didn't have to like plan it and really be like, Oh, like we have to, I have to figure out. I just, it just came to me. It was like, Oh, this is what needs to happen next. Mm -hmm. Because this is what I'm like really jamming on is like laying on pillows and blankets and like feeling like I've, I've actually rested. And, you know, I opened up first. I, I want to acknowledge this to, the yogis that were in the space, you know, that weekend, like, I just want to acknowledge, I always struggle as a teacher, you know, like when people are like, thank you, you like, you did so much magic and like, or it was so great. Like, yeah, kind of, but I like said things and like, I planned it, but really everything happened because of them, you know? And I, and I want to really just, I was blown away by the space that they allowed themselves to enter. Now I may have created the container and been like, this is the time. This is the time we're going to meet. Here's when we're, here's how we're going to do it. And these are the things that we're going to do in there. But the permission to really let yourself go there is, is on you. It's on the student. Right. And these, you know, 17 humans came together and it was just real and raw. And everyone was either going through something or had something really deep to share, you know, about their own experience in life right now and what was going on. So what was different about it was one, when have you ever heard me teach a <laughs> restorative workshop? Uh, like barely, if ever, you know, that's not really something that I'm known for, you mm -hmm. know, I'm known for everyone comes to my classes to do party tricks. Like that's it. You know, not everyone. I think it's, it's changed over the years, but you came to my class because it was a really hard vinyasa class and mm -hmm. you wanted to sweat and you wanted to move and you were going to do handstand and you wanted to do whatever it is. And the whole weekend had none of that. We didn't do one standing pose. We didn't do one standing practice, you know, it was except for the, the we did tune up balls and you had to stand and roll out your feet for a little bit, but everything was really low to the ground and really, you know, it was just really restful. And that's not my, that's not what people expect from me. Mm -hmm. I would say. I would say, or maybe that wasn't what I expected for myself. It could be a projection, right? What of those um, practices felt, I would say the most like essential to helping people find that space you're talking about? So I opened the weekend up with like a story, you know, and I've started every workshop ever in life, except for uh, the, my Bali retreat, which was a couple of years ago. I started it with the story mm -hmm. and the story was about me struggling with depression. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, this is what I've gone through, you know? And I kind of walked people through the dark, the very darkest day of my depression this summer and how I felt and what it felt like in my body and how I got to nourish and unwind this past weekend was because of that was because I like jumped on the phone with, you know, some teachers and was like, what do I do right now? Like, I don't want to go, I don't want to do this anymore. And, and I shared that story. I shared, you know, what I was going through and how yoga got me to now being in a better place. And at the end of it, I 
I really just welcomed everyone to be in whatever experience they were in. So Mm -hmm. if you were in depression right now, show up with it. If you were jumping for joy, awesome. Bring that to the table. If you're going through it and you don't even know what day or place you are, like, great. Mm -hmm. And if you want to show up and just cry the entire weekend, like, do it. Mm -hmm. This permission to really be, um, because sometimes I don't think that that we do. I'm totally going to put you on the spot, but so inauguration, right? There were tears, not on my behalf to start. And I didn't even think that I was going to cry, but as I saw you crying and, you know, kind of put a hand on you, I was like, Oh wow. I really needed to cry too, but I didn't give myself that permission until, you know, I saw you be a bit more vulnerable. And so I decided, you know, that that was okay. Mm-hmm. And I think, Maybe, maybe the people in the group can say the same or or can, you know, validate this way more than I can, but maybe my vulnerability of my lived experience going into the weekend gave them permission to, to be that I think is teaching yoga. Yeah. You know, you can, you can pull a book out and teach someone warrior too. I hear an element of, of truth in there Mm -hmm. or almost like the the ability to enter that sort of healing space comes through truth, acceptance. Yeah. 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 So how, when you're not in a nourish and unwind weekend, um, can you get to that space in a daily class or in a meditation? Um, what are, what are some easy techniques that we can do like right now to like help find that space? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, like as a facilitator or as a practitioner? I would say either. I mean, I think of me for in yoga, like how as I'm taking a vinyasa class, can I really, um, how can I keep the focus on truth Mm -hmm. um, and meeting myself at exactly where I'm at? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For me, and again, this is my perspective and, you know, again, it's, this is, well, yeah, it's my show, so I can say whatever, whatever the fuck I want, really. But, you know, for me, what I think about is there is so much external pressure, right, on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to feel and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that's great. But and I sometimes start, how to do the pose. And right? sometimes how to do the pose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is how you should do everything. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, what I've done recently, and you can take this as a practitioner or as a, a, a either or, right? But I started class on Wednesday night and I was like, you know, let's sit down, bring one hand to the earth, bring one hand to your heart and first feel the ground below and know that you're here. Like mm-hmm. first thing is, first thing is first is that you are right here. So if you're, you know, thinking about earlier or you're future tripping, like just ask yourself the question, helpful or not helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, if that thought right now, if while, while you're sitting right now, you're, you're tripping on like, Oh my God, I got a parking ticket and like, is that helpful right now? Yeah. You know, no, cool. Get rid of it. Then if it, if it is helpful, you know, is feeling connected. If you're like in your, well, I feel the ground is, is that helpful for me? Yeah. So there. Right. And then the second check-in I always do is like, just like your heart, like, what are you walking in with today? Mm -hmm. And I don't think much like the breath, we really check into that unless someone tells us to, or unless we have some sort of sadhana practice where you're like journaling or part of your tuning in is tuning into your heart. And so the simple invitation of like, and I said that I, you know, I said I was, it was inauguration day. I said, you know, I was a mess this morning and I was crying and I even tried to like get out of teaching today, but I decided to show up and I still want to teach and I still want to be here. I'm just a little raw. Mm-hmm. you know, and so I'm going to teach a little raw. So I might teach a little slower tonight and that's okay because you've been there before where you've yeah. gone to a yoga class and you need to move a little bit slower or you need to move a little bit faster. And I think that permission again, you know, as a, you know, whether there was someone else that was going to take over the class probably gives them permission to show up in their experience. Mm-hmm. You don't have to dump that on your students and be like, you guys are having a really bad day. Let's process this together. But you can show up and be like, has anyone ever been sad before? How do you move through that? Can we try to experience what that, what that feels like to move, move something through us? Like, I think that's cool, you know? Yeah. Um, 
And I think you gave me the feedback. I think it was like, there's just a little more permission in my classes because I'm literally saying it out loud. Like give yourself permission for one hour out of your day. You don't have to anything. Mm -hmm. So if you want to show up and just sit down on your mat, great. You know, if you want to show up and pop into every single handstand, phenomenal. Yeah. You know, and the cool thing is, is like you gave me permission, right? The people that show up in the room that keep coming back every single week, it's giving everyone else the permission to do the same. Mm-hmm. Like they're out, they're coming back. I don't know if they realize that, but like by one person coming, it gives the other person that was there last week that was like, yeah, this person was here too. And they connected on that language or whatever. We can, we can continue to, to do that. We can continue to be a little more truthful. And that's kind of what you're after in this sort of pivot on the, the name, right? Is creating this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, mutually beneficial um, experience of people who are seeking something and connecting them with. Well, yeah, because <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're, so the Yogi Misfits things is just, was like, you know, that was at the very start of my full-time yoga thing, you know, so long ago. No, but it was just like, you know, I felt like I never fit in and, um, and then I realized that I, I did fit in, I guess, you know, in my own way. And, you know, I changed the name of the podcast to Seeker and Sage because it's really what I'm doing on the show. Selfishly, I brought in all these f- fucking phenomenal teachers and thought leaders and, you know, authors and things like that because I wanted to hear what they had to say and I yeah. wanted to have like a direct connection to the source. You know, I wanted to be like, what are, like, <laughs> tell me about how you did this or how you got there. And, their sage advice, their wisdom. Yeah. Totally, totally. Mm-hmm. And when I heard most of them speak, I was like, oh, you know this. There is not that like, not that like, oh my God, yeah, I knew that too. But like, as they were saying it, I felt it in my body and I was like, oh yeah, that feels right. Mm-hmm. You know, because you know, you're, the sage advice that you're getting from somebody else, it is in you. You sometimes just have to wake it up, mm-hmm. you know, and you have to, there is guidance to, to get to certain places, to reach certain places there, but you know, the stu- student first, you know, and, and we're always the teacher and the student at once. And I think that, you know, I'll just tie it back to the, the person that comes to class and give someone else the permission to do the same is at the same one person is the seeker and one person is the sage and right. it flips, you know, I don't think that, maybe I assume that, you know, most people that come into my, my classes realize that like they are my biggest teachers. Yeah. Yeah. They think that I'm the teacher that day and I'm like, no fucking way. I am learning from you every single time. Mm -hmm. If I want, if I choose to, Mm -hmm. and that's what I choose to do is I want to learn every single time there's students in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So I would love to hear more about um, the way that you envision this community shifting. Yeah. um, With this sort of new perspective in mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, I have a little like declaration. I'm going to pull it up on my phone while we're here. And I I just, um, actually, we'll link this in the podcast show notes too. But I have a little declaration and we wrote, we rewrote the, um, the, the description of, the, the podcast, which bleeds into the, the Facebook group, you know, our community group. And this is our, this is our like iPhone screensaver. That's I'm like super proud of because like you can just pull up your phone and it's like right there every time. And, and the statement is, I believe in strength in my being. I grow through vulnerability of my heart. I access wisdom from within me. I offer support to my community. I am the seeker and the sage. I love it. And that to me is just like, oh yeah, it's like all the things that I believe in, you know, community, like strength, really like remembering, you know, how strong we are. Sometimes strong is learning to back off smart, you know, just like just being able to, to think and to, to question and find the inquiry and heart. And if you really want to break that down, the community strength, smart and heart is my teachers. I don't think anyone realizes that, Mm -hmm. but it's, 
what I learned from everybody and me. I like to bring community together. It is my absolute favorite thing to do. It's, I think, one of my biggest skills. Strength uh, comes from Jason, you know, comes from all the anatomy and all of, you know, his wisdom that was really, you know, brought into, into my, I mean, it was a process of transmission from him, you know, and yeah, smart was Noah, you know, Noah really taught me how to break every single rule. Noah and Rocky, you know, anytime I say no, it's, it's Noah and Rocky, but they taught me how to break the rules and heart was Janet and Kia, Mm -hmm. you know, they really just got in there (laughs) Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's, it's these notes just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. And the reason why I decided to, to, you know, change the Facebook group to more of a community minded group is, yeah, I want to have these conversations and share the podcast in there. And I want people from the pot that are listening to the podcast right now to go to the Facebook group and like, you know, hang out in there. And the reason why is because I truly believe that the community that is in there is so knowledgeable and so smart and so real. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there are a lot of students in there and there are a lot of teachers in there. And so I think some of the students are going to ask questions and it gives an opportunity for these amazing teachers that are in this group to step up. And it gives teachers the opportunity to ask questions. And sometimes a student who might be a doctor or this or that or whatever can step up and answer the question. And, you know, we're, we're giving that community a lot of love now, you know, we're doing a live monthly call, you know, zoom meeting or it's a Facebook live, but, you know, this one is happening on to Derek, who everyone has heard about. Oh, Derek's been on the show, but Derek is like my anatomy, like ninja. He's just amazing. He, he's just a smart man. And the way he, he, he just speaks to anatomy just gets you excited. So this Saturday, the 30th, we're doing a, a one hour, just free workshop just to talk about the feet. This people were asking about the feet. So we're going to break down the feet and how to like use your feet in different poses and the bone structure and the joints. And cool. we just want to give it into this community and, and share it with the community. Because I think that when we have that conversation, people will be able to be like, pew, 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 like mm-hmm. connect some dots or have like another side conversation or pick something else. And then next month, um, I'm going to have a philosophy talk for an hour. And, and then the month after that, I want to focus on some teachers and help them out with their businesses and help awesome. them grow. And then, you know, we'll start the cycle all over again and really let the group be the facilitator of that, that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure there is, this is a, a, a big question, but how do you see us getting to practice or to get familiar with these pieces of the manifesto or the mission statement? I mean, I think it's going to be in the way that I am definitely a leader in the community for Mm -hmm. sure. So that's a part of it. So I think it has to do with, I was, it's so funny. I just caught myself. I was going to say in the way that I teach it, but that's not actually true. It's in the way that I live it. Yeah. By example. Yeah. You know, I think it's by example. And I, you know, I feel like I have been living my life very differently in the past little bit, you know, Mm -hmm. as I wake up every day and I tell myself, you know, I am an expert and, you know, my other, my two things are, I am an expert and I'm thinking about the man I want to become. I call it my daddy life, (laughs) you know, um, just, yeah, like my, my queer life, you know, like what kind of man do I want to become, you know, and, and. I, I, you know, I don't necessarily say them out loud every day, but they're definitely like, they're not like, I need to be this person, but it's just like, let them out. Mm -hmm. Let them out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. 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 It feels, it feels good. And I think that's how the, 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 the community will, will feel it and also be able to live it. I mean, it's not, you know, I think that they're pretty cool things that we're, we're declaring. Yeah. They're deep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we need that. I think, yeah. I don't know. For me, I don't want to talk about the weather, (laughs) you know, I'm like, cool. Nice to meet you. When was the last time you cried? (laughs) 
Yeah. Actually, go into handstand really quick. Now, when was the last time you cried? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hold Trikonasana for 30 minutes and uh, let's talk about your greatest fear. Right. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see the way that it sort of um, moves into your your teaching and your your way of showing yourself. Mm. Um because I think it'll manifest in ways that you don't even know yet. Um, so I'm just excited. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the biggest part is I don't think, I don't think I know. Whereas beforehand I was very strategic about like things have to look a certain way. Yeah. And now I'm just very clear about this part. I'm very clear about this part. You know, I'm very clear you know, in that fit of mania where I was like, oh my God, the seekers and the sages, they're right in front of me and I, they're and within me. And, you know, like my four bullet points of community, strength, smart, and heart. I'm like, these are my values. Yeah. And these are the people that I'm connecting with that share these same values and that see that. And yeah, I think there's, there's so much more to yoga than just the movement mm -hmm. although it's 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 helpful it's one of the things that has gotten me to where i'm at today but without the self-study and without the inquiry you know i don't think i would be as vulnerable as possible and without the practices of stillness and even there there's a deeper there's a deeper you know like being provoked in kundalini man that'll teach you something yeah yeah when you've got your arms up in ego eradicator for 30 minutes and kia miller's like you're doing great and you're just like i hate you <laughs> like why are you so sweet to me right now <laughs> you know you're just but it teaches you something yeah it teaches you something about yourself more valuable than just maybe how to do a warrior too yeah yeah and sometimes i think not sometimes i think how to do a warrior too is very very valuable yeah you know, but yeah, you said, you know, you said this to me, like the way you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And that has really stuck with me. Like the way that, the way that I operate and the way that I walk my values and share my values in the world is the way that I will show up as a teacher is the way that I will show up as a partner is mm -hmm. the way that I'll show up as a brother is the way that I'll show up as a son is mm -hmm. the way that I'll show up as a stranger on the street. And I'm sure I'm going to fuck those up a lot, you know, um, like a lot, a lot, but I'm going to do my best to have them at the forefront of my mind mm -hmm. and to continue to alchemize all of the things and, and, you know, make them, mm -hmm. you know, use a little more of, of reflection in my story so that when I tell my story, I remind myself, yeah. you know, when I share the nuggets of, whatever the case may be in a story that I, I also say that out loud for me because I think that's healing. And it's also like, Oh wait, you, you have been patient with yourself. You have been kind with yourself. You have done the work here or whatever the case may be. I think yeah. that it has, it has power. Yeah. In a great way. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good stuff. I like it. I think it's going in a good way. Yeah. I yeah. think so too. I'm trying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got for me today, Stephen Andrew? Um, what's there's a there's something for seekers and sages coming, right? There's a book. We're doing a book soon. Oh yeah, we got book club coming up. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. What's first up? Okay, so the first book. Hold on, I'm gonna reach back on my bookshelf and grab it. So the first book. So you're, you're going to be listening to this podcast episode, hearing that we are going to be doing The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This was actually the first book that I did when I did book club uh, two years ago. Okay. Um, and it's a great one. It's a good one. And I wanted to bring it back. And so we're going to do it. So pick up The Four Agreements. I will post all the details. Actually, what there's going to be is inside the Facebook group, there'll be um, an event. And then basically we've got about six weeks to read this. And then we have a live call inside the Facebook group where everyone gets to come in, chat. I'll have some prompts. I'll talk about how I felt about the book, but really it's the conversation of community and we'll, we'll do it in a little, uh, 
little Zoom hangout. Everyone will chill and chat and I'll talk about some things. And then we get to discuss the book and what we learned from it and what we took away from it. And cool. Yeah. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, some, some people will be able to ask questions on the actual podcast of it too. So that'll be really cool. And with the books that are coming up, so I have a couple on, on deck that I really want to do. Um, I might have some surprise authors Ooh. coming to our book club sessions. Wow. Yeah. What an upgrade. What an upgrade. And also, if anyone wants to put this out there, like, help me manifest this, Brene Brown. <laughs> I want her on the show. <laughs> I want her on Seeker and Sage. I want to do one of her books. I told you this. Yeah. I think I could do it. I th- listen, if anyone's listening to the podcast and you got an in with Brene Brown, tell her that she's got... Is give your, her a call. Give her a call and be like, hey. <laughs> Seeker and Sage. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so pod, or, uh, book club coming up. Book club, free anatomy, anything else on deck next week or so? Those are the really the biggest giveaways right now. We're cool. doing yeah the free anatomy lecture on the 30th, which is on uh, Saturday, the Saturday coming up at 9 a.m. Um, you can head to uh, my Instagram stories and under events, you can just sign up right there. We'll give you the link uh, 15 minutes before the call starts. Um, it's me and Derek, and we're just going to be giving you – a, for it's it, teachers that are out there. They can actually, when they're done with this, after they're done with the, with the thing, they can write a, a little two page essay. We grade it and then they can actually pay. If they pay the admin fee for it, then we'll send them a certificate and they can use it as yoga alliance hours. Awesome. It's mm-hmm. incredible. Yep. Yep. The, the work, the workshop itself is free, but if they want to do that, there's a small fee just cause there's admin time that goes yeah. into grading and all the good things, but yeah. And uh, yeah, they'll just, be, you know, tons more conversation in, in, in the group. And I think book club is going to be a really cool way of, of sparking some more interest and in getting to hang out. And I guess the last, I don't want to give everything away, but I, I kind of do. There are special classes coming up for people only inside the community group. Okay. So there's rumors of a teacher hint, hint, uh, that might be hosting a free restorative two hour class for our community only. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Two hours of restorative sounds divine. Really good. Yeah. It's the best. So yeah, lots of things to look forward to lots of changes and lots of different ways that I'm planning on showing up and continuing to support, um, the community. Seems like some, some deep wisdom coming at us ahead. I'm trying yeah. <laughs> next, next book club, cat in the hat. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, right. let's, right. let's take that apart for a little bit. What about you, Danny? Anything else? I feel like that's it. I just wanted to say what's up to everybody and let them know about the changes and, you know, how I'm showing up and how we're showing up together and maybe just remind everybody, like, just permission, y'all. Yeah. Permission to show up. Come yeah. to class if you, if you need some permission. If you need that reminder, come to class and come hang out and, and we'll, uh, yeah. Love it's, that. It's a good way to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. I guess until the next Seeker and Sage, this is Stephen and Danny saying peace out. See ya. Peace.